Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco. And with me tonight, I have Slicey Dicey. Slicey, thanks for joining me, sir. Of course. It's always a good time. Well, uh, tonight we're going to talk about a few things, uh, some really exciting things. We're, we're also going to talk about some new knife releases, uh, uh, the new Cancept knife line, which I know you have a... Uh, I, I have, got a couple you of them have right a, here, uh, actually. Yeah. A line on. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the Kershaw Sprint Run series, which is an interesting thought at this moment. Caleb, Caleb, I think I might have some good news for you. Good to see you. Bad Monkey EDC. Thanks for joining us, sir. Uh, I'm going to have to check that in just a minute. But uh, before we get started on everything, I just want to mention uh, the Ultimate Steel. We are in Ultimate Steel fundraising season. Uh, that's that's the annual fundraiser that Knife Rights puts on to benefit their legislative work. It's expensive work. They go to every state and they lobby legislators and get laws changed uh, to get rid of these antiquated knife laws. Some even left over from Jim Crow. And uh, and then we know some of these laws from the 1950s, uh, from the, the hooligan laws or whatever they were called. Uh, yeah. he, he goes and he goes state by state with a team of lawyers and they're, they're, they're lobbying on both sides of the aisle and, and making great headway. So they do the ultimate steal every year. The Lord's work they're doing over there. They are indeed because they allow yeah. people like me and people like you, Brian, to do stuff, collect what we like and follow our passion. Yeah. And then, and we're good people. So, you know, <laughs> they, they definitely, they definitely did one in New York. I think it was just last year. They got the gravity knife ban overturned, which, Nobody even carries gravity knives, but that law was being abused and they were using it mostly just to lock up minorities in New York City. So, um, yeah, they, they got together, I think, with the ACLU and got that got that shut down. So that's great. Now I don't have to worry about it. if a knife shakes open, a cop's going to give me a hard time about it. Yeah. But I'm upstate. Upstate's a different world than New York City. So. Yeah, that's but. that is what i hear and it was very our, hey facebook user good to see you sir or ma'am probably sir <laughs> barry <laughs> good to have you uh that that arbitrary hey, uh, gravity knife thing is crazy it's like whoever can shake it out hey good to see you southern edge knife works what's up everyone yeah right. they they would actually the stories where they were like they were taking like a swiss army knife and grabbing it with a set of channel locks and whipping it open oh yeah yeah, yeah. These guys work out. They got the strong forearms. Whoosh, you know, you can yeah. whip open anything. So anyway, uh, Ultimate Steel, everyone uh, definitely go to Knife Rights. Uh, donate what you can. Or if not, uh, if you can't donate anything right now, still support them in, in any way you can. Spread the word. Uh, we did a uh, an auction today. We did two auctions today. Actually, I discovered today, never having done an Instagram auction, that I sort of bit off more than I could chew it was manageable but i should have just done one i realize uh but we received some uh some giveaway items when we did the the um, the town hall in the middle of april april 18th and we auctioned them off today uh with the proceeds going to knife rights one uh was a emerson super cqc7 uh and it was won by v man uh what's his uh v-man underscore 93 now full disclosure if you look closely at v-man 93 he looks an awful lot like me because he's my older brother and he stepped in he saw that this <laughs> thing was undervalued uh and was getting not much love it's a it's a 2013 emerson and uh you know that's a specific taste as you and i will discuss later brian yes. and my brother has a, a a 2013 or 2012 super commander and uh i was like Vic, thank you so much uh i'll, I'll pay you i'll buy it i really want it anyway he's like hell no man i bid on it it's mine it's going next to my commander so Vic, thank you very much uh you won the emerson cqc7 cool. super Let's see with family members uh family members no like that stuff. it's good to what's that no discounts, though. No discounts. No. As a matter of fact, no, I'm just kidding. And then uh, we had another package, the uh, Terzuola package. Uh, Bob Terzuola sent us a new copy, a new edition of his book, uh, The Tactical Folding Knife. It is an amazing book to, to look through, I have to say. You, you know, uh, I was speaking to uh, John Gonzalez of Dervish Knives, and he was saying he basically taught himself self how to make a, a folding knife from that book, uh, the first edition. Um, and uh, so amazing book he sent. He also sent um, the Terzuola designed uh, drop distributed. We produced 
uh, compact tactical folder, CTF. It's a nice little flipper. And, uh, and also a tie uh, cap lifter, as you can see there, that green tie cap lifter. And um, so uh, this went for $350 to Caleb underscore Townsend.edc. Caleb Townsend EDC, you won the Bob Terzuola package. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And Knife Rights really appreciates it. And uh, I will get in touch with you to give you the details as to how to get the funds to me. Of course, I will pay for shipping and I will get this out to you post haste. As a matter of fact, I can do it tomorrow because I have to go into the office tomorrow. So I'll be going by the post box. So thank you, uh, everyone who participated in this auction. And uh, um, it was it was a little bit of a confusion for me, but I think uh, some things have gotten cleared up as I as I've as I've gone on, and, and one of those things is one auction at a time. Now I feel delinquent that I haven't done an auction yet. So, but you do a lot of giveaways, which I do, which yeah, I try to, yeah. everyone appreciates. I mean, just a lot of companies are very generous to me, so I, I try and pass on as much of it as I can. Sometimes I keep it, but you know, normally I, I just try and pass it along. If if I didn't pay for it, I'd say seventy percent of the time I use it for a giveaway. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's and, and it also knife dude. Good to have you. It also spreads the uh, not not only the good juju, but it's kind of like uh, the more people you can reel into into the hobby, the better for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a lot of people will say, "Oh, giveaway videos just draw clicks." Yeah, they do, and that's fine. It gets people watch the video. You know, it gets them into the hobby. It's uh, it doesn't hurt anybody. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm uh, sorry about my stupid glasses tonight, by the way. Like, why? My eyes, are mess my eyes are messed up again. I hate wearing glasses. So. Oh, dude. I think they make you look kind of like an architect. Really? Yeah, I hope you don't yeah. mind that I say so. But, it's but, better, uh, than, better than schoolyard stalker. So I guess yeah. <laughs> yes, that. it's much better. Yeah. Uh, the Emerson uh, Super CQC7 went for a, a, a luscious 210. Uh, I probably should have jumped in on the action, but something kept holding me back. Like it looks bad to to bid on your own auction, but I guess if it's out in the open, there's nothing wrong with that. Bill asks, yeah. "Hey Bob, thank you for the previous podcast. I do have my name." Oh yes, oh yes, the Yo Jumbo. Cannot wait for I, the Yo Jumbo. I have the Yo Jumbo reserved on two different websites, so, <laughs> <laughs> like, nice. just to make sure that I get one. So, yeah. so have have you seen that little uh, aftermarket? Um, cold steel uh opener it's kind of like the snaggle tooth I, except i oh i haven't seen that one no i was but, thinking the snaggle tooth is where you were going yeah no it's it's like the snaggle tooth but it fits on the yojimbo and i can't remember the name of the company but um uh, uh michael janich worked with the guy or knows the guy who who created it mm. and and it takes an already kind of devastating knife and makes it even quicker and more i just know. got one of the aluminum uh snaggle tooth snaggle teeth uh, today from doing the, the, uh, oh, cool. The town hall with you. I, I got some, the plastic ones from before, but I remember I said on the show, I got to get one of the aluminum ones and it showed up today. So it's like, cool. So now I got to change. I just got a recon one Tanto that's begging for it. So. Oh yeah. Recon one. I love, I love the recon yeah. one. So Brian, uh, I, I want to tease a little something. We're going to talk about it a lot later. Uh, but you got a bit of uh, special news uh, and I'd like you just to bring it out. Um, yeah, so uh, I had a thing happen last week. Um, I've been writing for Knives Illustrated for a few months, and um, we had a hiatus, of course, because of what's going on in the world. So uh, our editor got furloughed, and during her furlough, she found another job, and they asked me to replace her. So <laughs> I'm now the editor and brand leader, whatever that means, of uh, Knives Illustrated. So... It's been a hectic first week of work, I'll tell you that. Like it's um it's it's work running a magazine. It's uh it takes some time and I don't know what anything means. Like mm -hmm. it's uh like I know how the creative direction and stuff I'm very comfortable with. And I've done it before. I was interim editor for uh, I'd fill in sometimes for Wired and when I worked there and um I was editor of a newspaper for a while. Like I've done it before. It's not but it's just knowing all the computers and all that and not knowing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing and what I'm not supposed to be <laughs> doing. So, you know, you ever watch Office Space, that movie? Yes. Where he goes, what do you do here? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's been my whole week. Every time somebody emails me, I'm like, now, what exactly do you do? And me also going, what do I do? Like, I got, I got an email today asking me to prove some ad copy. And I was like, oh, I do that? They were like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. 
<laughs> you know, I just I had, like it's just every day is a new adventure where I just don't know what's going on. But, but so they gave you the title really of brand manager. Well, congratulations. I'm brand sorry, leader. I'm interrupting. Yeah, that is to me that's saying take me or take us and do what you will. You know, just change us and 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 do something good with it. The way I'm the way I would describe it in in layman's terms is basically like creative director. It's kind of uh, what I would if I had to encompass what I do. And um, I'm very excited about it. Um, they are great people to work with. I've worked with them, obviously, for the last few months. So I already knew everybody. And um, it's a pretty small team over there. It's not as many people as you think. Um, more, I'm learning there's a few more than I thought. But um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. And um, if you are a contributor to Knives Illustrated, and I haven't reached out to you yet, that's coming, by the way, um, this week. So we, Margaret, the former editor, is going to email everybody. And, and then I'll talk to everybody, but um, yeah, it's it's uh, I'm excited about it. There's uh, a lot of things I want to do, and they seem into it. One thing I'm gonna I haven't even told you yet. Um, there's gonna be a podcast starting as soon as probably I think the first episode's going up in the next week. Oh um, wow, what's it called? So uh, Knives Illustrated podcast. It's a very complicated and original. Thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, you know I did the Slice and Dicey podcast for a while. I do comedy podcasts, and I really like doing podcasts. Uh, and everybody's been begging for another Slicey Dicey podcast. Well, you're going to get one, but it's going to be on Nice Illustrated. And um, it's just going to be one-on-one -on -one interviews. I'm just going to take half an hour, 45 minutes. And since knives are a more visual kind of thing, I think a better way to approach it is I'm just going to interview makers and influencers and just get to know them. We'll talk about knives, obviously. But also, I just want to get to know the person a bit mm -hmm. more. And uh, I've got three guests lined up. So um, for the first three, and uh, I've got um, Elijah Isham, and I don't know what order I'm going to put them out in, but Elijah Isham and Dave from ProTech and uh, Greg Medford. So um, we're going to give Greg Medford a topic, <laughs> but uh, it'll be it'll be uh, yeah, good idea. Um, right? uh, but uh, yeah, it's I, it's going to be a lot of fun. Half half hour to however long they want to talk. You know, maybe oh, sometimes man. we'll have hour long episodes. Who cares? Um, uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, just to give a, another way to to let people know about Knives Illustrated. And But it's also a great way for you to meet your heroes. I mean, that's, you know, that's what we've done with this yeah, podcast and, is like, and get a chance luckily, to meet these people who are responsible for these things that we obsess over. And luckily through Slicey Dice, I've already met a lot of them and I'm no idiot. I know that's part of the reason why I got the job is because I, I know. Everybody. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's fine. And uh, yeah, when they wanted me to get some guests, I, I put up the idea of a podcast and they said, you know, who do you want for guests? And I'm like, Oh, let me, give me a day. You know, right, I right. Had, you know, seven, eight guests lined up within a day and just look at your Instagram feed and start. Yeah, it's super easy. And um, just guys that I know are interesting, you know, like, I want to talk to Elijah Eichmann and be like, you know, talk about knives, but be like, they're like, how did you get so weird? He's <laughs> yeah, like, right. I love the guy, but you know, he's an eccentric fella. And like, it'll just be a yeah. fun conversation like that. And um, I want to get a, everybody to get a few chuckles in here and there during it and just make it an entertaining, you know, half hour, 45 minutes of your time. You also have a great uh, perspective coming at it from not only a knife enthusiast and someone who's a, an experienced podcaster, broadcaster, but also, um, you know, you're a comedian and that's a great way uh, comedians, people who are funny uh, tend to have, uh, tend to draw great things out of people, I think. And yeah. uh, so that's a great kind of perspective to be coming at it from too. I, I just want everything to be entertaining. And like you, you can do a review of a knife and still get everything across that everyone needs to know and make it entertaining. It doesn't have to be, you know, 2000 words or, or 15 minutes on YouTube of just facts. You know, right. it's, 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 I like to have some fun or I wouldn't still do it. I'd get bored. So what, what are you, um, uh, what are you inheriting and kind of what are you planning on doing with it? Uh, as far as the planning, um, it's going to, I'm taking over a couple issues that are pretty much done. Mm -hmm. So um, I just have minor input on those. So you won't see my actual full on input until I think it's the October issue or something like that. But um, uh because it's, it's print, you know, we go way in advance, but you're going to see a lot more social media activity. I've already started doing a lot more on the Instagram and stuff. Um, you're going to see like the podcast. 
just a lot more digital uh, kind of stuff going on. And um, and then as far as the magazine goes, um, I haven't talked to all of my contributors yet, so I don't really want to comment on that yet. I'm not I'm not going to radically change what the flavor of the magazine is. It's been around for a long time, mm -hmm. and we have a very loyal group of subscribers. And I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but probably more folders. I think is the main thing you're going to see mm -hmm. is more you know modern folders, and you know you're going to see more you know spider co's and bench maids and hinders and medfords and stuff like that you know so are are they cool with you continuing slicey dicey the channel on youtube they basically demanded that i do that. <laughs> good so um well if they're yeah, smart cause, <laughs> yeah because it's a, it's big you know and yeah. the big ish for for what we are it's still tiny in my mind but you know it's 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 a medium-sized fish <laughs> in a small pond and um they want me to keep doing that and i will keep doing it so you guys probably notice i've stopped doing the two videos a day i don't have time for that anymore and there may come a time when it's not one a day anymore it may be three a week or something like that but it's never going away i, I love it and the live show will never go away i love doing that and um bruise and blades yeah bruise and blades is my favorite i look forward to that all week long that's just an hour of hanging out with my buddies you know and it's yeah. uh and I really enjoy it. Like the weird quiz show and stuff. Did you watch the quiz show we did? I didn't, no. It actually went really well. I thought it might be a complete cluster. But no, we did a quiz show and I gave away a Viper Shark. Oh, my God. What and um, been living and in everyone, a dark place. Everyone behaved and it was really good and it was a lot of fun. And um, it was just like knife trivia quiz and the winner got a Viper Shark. So that was a lot of fun. So uh, what what kind of questions were they? Uh, questions about uh, knife models actually, that are current and that kind of thing? I actually still have them here. Um, oh, the final one was an inside one. That was from one of my own videos. So I wanted to see people were paying attention. Oh. <laughs> but one of them was, uh, what country is, are, is Gareth Bold Knives based out of? Uh, where are most cold steels made? Um, is that South Africa and Taiwan, right? Yep, you, you'd be very good at this. Yeah, it's <laughs> just, it's questions. It's just general, general like kind of knife knowledge questions. Like right, that, right, you know? right. Spend a lot of time on on YouTube. I do indeed. Yeah, hey, don't we all? Uh, I want to talk more about your position as an editor, but before we get there, I want to get your perspective as a reviewer on Cancept knives, uh, which I've I've seen I recently. And uh, there's an article now in Knife News about him. And I didn't realize that it was started by, uh, by uh, what's his name? Uh, Ning, the designer. Uh, yeah, Kim Ning. Yeah. Kim Ning, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, I had a relationship with Kaiser before. And um, then, you know, they started this and some of them looked cool. And I can't remember if they reached out to me or I reached out to them. And uh, they asked me if I wanted to try a couple and um i bought one because uh white mountain knives had them in stock and mm -hmm. and i liked that one so i just bought one myself and then they sent me uh, a couple more one of which i gave away on my channel uh but i have the cryo and the warrior and they're really nice i do have to say they say on their own facebook page that basically they're trying to make like obviously they're kaiser-esque designs yeah same dude but they want to make basically slightly nicer kaisers and that's kind of what they've done wow kaisers are already kind of nice right yeah so yeah this is oh, the wow. cryo they have this really cool orange peel finish on a lot of them that i just really really like i just it's not going to come across well on this camera, but yeah it's pretty sick and then i just got the warrior which i think i like even more is that it Oh, I thought I had it right out here ready to go. There it is. Warrior's a Tanto, right? Yeah. Bad Monkey the, says the Warrior looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the Warrior that I got. So, yeah, pretty yeah. evil looking Tanto. But it's not super huge. It's not like a big, giant, you know, tactical knife. It's actually pretty normal size. But that uh, the front of that Tanto is very aggressive, though. It's it's. Beautiful Kim uh, Kim Ning, I think he designed the uh, Quicksilver, uh, which is a um, yeah. He, he designed most stuff that wasn't you know an Isham or something like that. Right. Oh my God, I, I love his design. So I was very excited to see uh, that Cancept was was his thing. So I mean, uh, in your opinion, uh, 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 a good 
you know, making good knives and even and maybe they a seem little to bit. be. I mean, I've I've had three here and all three were, you know, pretty flawless, perfectly centered, all that stuff. And they just have a bit more of a one of those kind of bit more finished feels that you just can't quite quantify, you yeah. know, over Kaisers. But you can yeah. tell they're probably made in the same place because like the box finish is exactly the same. And, oh wow. And you know, just little things that yeah. you know, when you've handled enough knives. Even if they don't say who made it, you can look at the screws and know who made it. You know, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a pretty educated guess of where it was made, but um, looks looks like a, both commenters seems, think it's pretty badass. But yeah, they're they're they are really cool. So um, so you were saying, I'm yeah. sorry, the fit and finish is just a little bit better than what Kaiser was. So interesting. So I got uh, from Jared from Neves Knives. Uh, he sent me. Uh, he and Kara sent me four. Uh, uh, two sun knives, and I just opened yeah. up the box uh, like an hour or two before uh, we started this. And oh, God, man, they are really impressive. I, I sh uh, I'm a little bit surprised. I got to say, I was I was not expecting to. Um, I don't know. Find them as That's compelling as that. What's that? That's interesting. Now that I've seen that one before in person, yeah. and those that one is super cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really cool one. So what, I'm incapable you, of remembering numbers, so I don't remember yeah, what model that is. Exactly. Right. I've never been good at math. But uh, so you say interesting. Uh, now you're talking, Bob. Dave, is, Dave has, been, uh, has been regaling me with his amazing collection of Tucson knives. Oh, and, uh, Tucson fans are, that's a rabid bunch. It really is. Holy crap. Like, I, I get so much crap for not reviewing them. But the reason why I don't review them, I have nothing against the company. I don't put them in a category of cloners or anything like that. It's nothing mm -hmm. like, it, it, they're not in my do not review list. But you got to get them, like, on eBay and stuff. And I hate eBay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Way Mountain yeah. Knives has them. And I try and snatch them. But they go quick. I do have one. I have a TS-56 now. It's not within arm's reach. But um, the... My card is not that nice, but other than that, it's a it's a really cool blade and stuff. And the action is amazing on those things. All two sons have amazing action. Really amazing action. Crowned uh, this, you know, this one has a crown spine, or at least up here it does. And and uh, yeah, the build. I mean, they feel so. I, I I was saying before we started rolling, I feel uh, two son for life. Amazing quality. Uh, I feel they're like suspiciously good. <clears throat> it's kind of like um, Trader Joe's food. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how is this so good and so cheap? And like, what's in it? You're right. Like, <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Trader, I, I'm a big fan of Trader Joe's. I just <laughs> don't like, uh, I don't like having to have fisticuffs with suburban housewives. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I haven't entered I Trader Joe's since the beginning of this. That's one grocery store I've not been back to. I just know that's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of waiting outside, at least in, in ours. Uh, I agree. Spirited whiskey. I mean, their food is awesome, but uh, yeah, the we one I have one in Rochester. We just have one. Uh, okay. So yeah. There's a bit of waiting in line like outside because they're the one near us is not very large and they were only yeah. allowing a certain amount of people. So yeah, but but I do know what you mean. The elbows are sharp of the suburban suburban housewives. Yeah, you can't throw a rock over hitting a Range Rover in the parking lot. Of it, so. <laughs> I'm always throwing rocks. And, Range Rovers and Porsche McCanns everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the one of the most. Uh, I, I, I'm going to talk about cars for one second. I don't know much about them, but I, I have to say, one of the most depressing trends over the last 15 years is Porsche, Maserati, Mercedes Benz making these grocery getter uh, SUVs. Yeah. I'm like, oh, really? You're going to put a Maserati Trident on that thing? I almost, like a Toyota. One of, I almost leased one of those because they give them away. Oh, really? Like the leases on them are ridiculous. It's like 2.99 a month for a wow. Maserati. Well, maybe I'll it's maybe I'll rethink end, my. But but you want to get rid of it before the lease is up because they break constantly. Oh oh well. Yeah, they're horribly unreliable. Yeah I, I yeah apparently uh, it's all about the design over there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, th the other thing I wanted to ask you about uh, and get your opinion on is uh, this was another item I saw in uh, in Knife News Kershaw Sprint Run series taking the leak. Uh, yeah making it s30v you know the random leak actually which is cool that's their worn cliff version of the leak and yeah. and kind of uh anodizing it a bright yellow and calling it a sprint what do you think of that is that i thought i thought about getting one but i i'm not the world's biggest leak fan though so that's why i didn't like i think it looks cool and that's definitely my favorite version of the leak but 
I've never been an assisted guy. I'm just not. And I had a leak because I thought I should have one. And I get it. I get why people like them so much. Uh, but it's not my cup of tea. And yellow is not really my cup of tea either. But I'm glad to no. see them doing that. I'd love to see like a bare knuckle sprint run. That'd be really cool. They could do something amazing with that. That's more what it is. I couldn't quite put my finger on why this is sticking in my craw. And that's what it is. It's a uh, uh, take care of bad monkey. Uh, the, 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 the thing that was really bothering me is that it, it should be a bare knuckle. It should be something a little bit more, you know, more in their modern lineup. And um, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I, I read an article. I'm like, why am I reacting this way? What, what does it matter? Good blade shape. Agree. Enough belly. Good access to the tip. It's even attractive. I'm not a yellow guy either, but it looks good with that stonewash black blade. But I was, something I about like it just seemed like a dollar a late. In a, in a, what's that? I do like their black wash a whole lot. Yes. Like, yes, I do. I've got one here. I've got a launch 11 that has that finish on it, and it looks great. You know, the launch 11. So, yeah, I got the, uh, the, uh, this bare knuckle that I bought recently on the secondary market uh, with the, the, uh, with the black wash. This is a really great knife. I love this little knife. I love I love the I love the bare knuckle and once they break in they are as smooth as any ZT. Yeah, yeah, this is really smooth and it fits in the waistband nicely. It's nice and thin. I, yeah. I like that about that. So okay, so I'm being a curmudgeon. It's not too late. It, there is a need for it. Uh, it is an evergreen design. So yeah, why not just? The, but why the, the fanfare? The need, the need for it is they will make every freaking one that they'll sell every one they can make. You know, if if they make. 500 of them they'll be gone in a day if they make a thousand they'll be gone in two days you know it's so hugely collectible every single one they can make yeah that's that's right that's right this is making and sense they, and, and, and that's a guy there's a history of the league they've done a whole lot of really special like very short run ones before i don't think they just ever used the word sprint run before right right yeah See, sprint run makes me think of uh of um spider co or whatever it, it's interesting like uh uh spider co does a sprint run and they 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 upgrade the steel and they change the g10 color and uh when pro tech i we're just talking about pro tech because we we're both um you were talking about your harkins and uh, but when pro tech does a sprint run it's like with abalone and it's hand engraved and like i really yeah. like how they do the sprint run thing like when it's special it's super special but it's also three times the price of a standard one where sure spider co it's five bucks more than a standard one so uh, yeah. I, I don't necessarily i'm not a fan of spider co sprint runs i just bought one but i don't normally buy one buy them but i bought it to customize it you um, got the rex 45 uh nato no i no i i, I sold that um oh. i got a uh s45 bnp m2 so oh. um but i ordered scales yeah, I think I made the scales before I have the knife. So uh, now a friend of mine was in a knife shop. Um, Lavender pants comments on my stuff all the time. I yeah. the username, by the way, but um, I know, me too. Uh, he was in a knife shop and sent me a picture of it, and I was like, "Fine," you know. And I got it because I I have that tool that um, Sharp Dress Knives makes to remove the lanyard too more easily without you know, oh swearing. yeah. And I've been wanting to use it, but my only PM2 is my crew wear one, and I like the scales on that. I have no desire to change them. That's the so slick was, G10, the slick yeah, black so G10. I was, yeah, I was kind of thinking about getting another PM2 to upgrade it, and that S45VN one is green, and Brian don't do green, so mm. I knew I'd want. So I got a set of scales for it. I'm gonna swap it out. So that machine uh, un uncrimps the lanyard tube. Yeah, it's like a little vice kind of thing that. Yeah, uncrimps it and lets it slide out. So cool. And they've yeah. always been fine getting them back in. It's just getting them out that first time. That's uh, that's a real pain. Yeah, I only took uh, my PM two apart once, and I jacked it up. I introduced some sort of play into there, and it's never been the same. And I've never been able to retweak it back. It's like it's kind of a mystery. It's kind of like a woman's body when you're an adolescent. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like you have you have some other issues. <laughs> I think you're right. More, more than your lack of knife making skills. <laughs> That's quite likely. Uh, I want to talk about. Uh, uh, I want to talk more about your your editor designate uh, in a second, but I also want to talk about your Harkins for a second. Talk yeah, about nice. the uh, the Protec Harkins you just got, and uh, also I'm buying an Emerson from you, or I bought an Emerson from you, and I also yes. want to I want to talk to you about about your impressions of that. And 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 
the and the reactions you got from some of your listeners. But first, tell me about this ProTech Harkins. So I, I just I learned a couple things about it from you before the show started because I knew they're really rare. But what happened was um, ProTech sent me a Malibu uh, to review, and uh, a couple of us are. Several of us on YouTube are getting those. You're going to see a lot of those over the next couple of weeks, uh, Malibu reviews. Um, and while that was in the process, I said, they said, is there anything else you want? Let us know. And I said, well, I want an Invictus. And they gave me a price and I purchased it. Hmm. And then I did the Invictus review and they really liked that. And they sent me a nice email saying they, they liked the review and they appreciated it. And they said, is there anything else you want? And I, I didn't know how rare the ATAC is. So I said, I really want an ATAC whenever those are available. And um, they, they said, uh, they said, well, you know, we really don't make a lot of those. Here are the only options that you have. And they said, yeah, we only make those over four years. I knew that, but I didn't know how, like how big the run was. And it was like, yeah, we have to shut down the factory for like four days. Just to make, like, 20 <laughs> then do <of> it. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay. And they sent me options and it was all coated blades. And huh. I know this is an expensive, rare knife. It's 450 bucks and it's very rare, but I still wanted to use it and have it not look beat up. So not that Protex coating is bad or anything, but it's going to scratch. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yeah, you know, I think I'm going to pass because you don't have any with the non-coated blades. And then Matt from Protec, who works there, said, uh, you know what? I got a non-coated one two days ago. <laughs> You can have mine. All I did is take pictures uh, with it. Is I've that Matt Yin? Used it. Yeah. He's he said cool. you can you can have mine and I'll take one of the coded wow. ones. And I was like, done. And I think I PayPal'd him within within single digit minutes, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, I was like, Yeah, I, I need that. So yeah, I got it today and it is freaking awesome. Well, let's let's and see it. The most impressive thing about it is so it's dual action, so it's auto. Or manual. So if you open it manual, it closes manual. If you open it auto, it it closes like an auto. And I kind of just thought that maybe one of the two wouldn't be like half ass, but I thought it wouldn't be that great. No, it is a super smooth manual and it kicks like a mule on the automatic. It's oh, just God. great both ways. And I love that no one can see how to open it like I luckily got obsessed about it. So when I took it out of the box, I knew how to do it. But um, yeah, you just push weird angle. You oh, just that's push like sweet. that and it just and then it then it closes like an auto. So the lower corner of but, the first inlay. You press yeah, it there? The lower corner of the first inlay and you just push it and it wow. bangs out. Man, you, you, can... use the line, you, you always have to use the liner lock to close it. It doesn't okay. do anything to push this to close it. So I have not taken it apart. I am not going to. Unless I absolutely have to, <laughs> but because I assume this is extremely complicated and very sweary to to work on. Sweary, that's funny. Do you do you take apart your automatics? I don't. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, a lot of them are hard. No, uh, I think the one I had the most difficult time with was uh, Guardian Tactical, but it's just because I hadn't taken apart an OTF before. So, oh, okay. That it wasn't difficult. It was just learning certain things have to go back in certain orders and like the blade has to be here when it goes back together. And it was, it, it just took some time. It wasn't like super difficult. It just took some time to figure it all out. Um, hmm. But now I take apart the side autos all the time and it's just a regular old knife with a spring. It's just a regular button lock with a spring in it. It's not, you know, that difficult or hard. Huh. Yeah, I guess I've 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 always kind of looked at it a little bit like magic or or something so I I kind of stay away from it. But uh yeah, I should check it out. Plus my my first auto was a was a um, a Microtech and they kind of wanted you to stay out of them. So I was like oh, yeah, yeah. they really want you to stay out of them. Yeah. So you recently did a review. You recently got uh, decided to give Emerson a second chance after you had a knife uh, several mm -hmm. years prior and wasn't wasn't in, you weren't into it. You got the new Emerson Appalachian and did a did a first impressions video and and mm -hmm. and you were pleasantly surprised. But I'm buying it from you and and that happened yeah. pretty quickly after you got it. So yeah, it's I, I tell me it's a lot better than the one I had five years ago. Everybody's saying that I needed to try another one was correct. It is better. Like the action's better, the quality's better. Um, but it's still just not my jam. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
uh, I'm glad that I experienced another one. I will probably get another one. Um, I still like it was the A100. Is that the one that that's the more slender? Yeah, it's very very neutral. Kind it, of it's pedestrian one. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably try one of those, but um, I still like. I love the blade on it. Yeah, but that G10 is just uh, too grippy for me, and uh, it's just pocket destroyer and i don't really care that much about the wave thing and mm -hmm. um i think they're great for what they are but you know and then it's at the end of the day it's a knife reviewer who wants to constantly get new stuff in it's it's 200 and some bucks you know so yeah yeah i just that will be better just to move it on to someone who i know will love it and appreciate it so. right right it, it's not like you're running a museum you don't have to have an emerson on hand at any moment you know, yeah. you have you have plenty of ways to get one if if you need it. Uh, I I appreciate it. I, I'm looking forward to that. I love the Appalachian blade. Yeah, it's right here actually. Do you oh, want to see? see? Do you want to get a little look yes. at it before? Yes. Let me it's see. actually going out. It's going out to you on the morrow. So beautiful. I recorded my last thing after you recorded with it today. So it is going out on the morrow. It is still flawless and in good shape, other than it probably has bits of my pants on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, bits of your pants, eh? I have the Gerber Applegate Fairbairn It is really smooth, control. though, I will say. It is very, very smooth. Those, oh, what do they call them? Like Nitrotron or something crazy oh, like that? Nylatron? Nylatron. Nylatron, yes. Yeah. It's the material of the future. It's yeah. Nylatron. It's like monorail. So uh, before I ask you uh, what your audience uh, uh, asked you, can you put the last one up, uh, Jim? The last comment. It was a, I have the Gerber Applegate Fairburn automatic covert. Um, okay. So I think that that's the same thing. A double action uh, auto. Is that right? I'm not sure. Okay. I have no idea. Anyway, I, I think that's a, a pretty cool design. I, I know Bill Harsey had some, some help in that. Uh, brace, <laughs> embrace your pants for those scales, Bob. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I always, I do the little sand job. Um, you know, they're, they're finicky, you know, and that's what I was going to do to it, but I thought if I do that, then it's going to hurt. It's Ooh. expensive enough. Not, like my Recon 1, I did it immediately. Yeah. Because it's an 85 or $90 knife, so I don't care. But like a $230 knife, I'm like, I don't really want to do that immediately. And the next yeah. person might not want it. And blah, 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 blah. And... So uh, Anthony commented that he had taken a number of Emersons on uh, deployment, I guess it looked like. Um, it seems like a great thing. I mean, um, so my experience with Emersons have always been that they, they have this break-in period, which uh, I've complained about. Uh, like why, this, why... This, one did, this one did not. It's super smooth right out of the box. Like that's so, one thing I will definitely give it. I, I had, uh, uh, when I got this, uh, this is my la uh, second to latest uh, Emerson, the Sax. I got it two years ago. And it it was came incredibly smooth, but it had wicked uh, lock stick. And I was like, what the hell, you know, man? And then it, like every other Emerson I've ever had, it was like fidget for a while, play with it for a while. And then all of a sudden, like overnight after, you know, two weeks, it's this amazing smooth thing. And I'm like, why can't it come to me like that? But yeah, the, the lock stick is gone from this one. I got rid of the lock sticks okay. for you. I, I, un, I unstuck it for you. But um, thank you. <laughs> but thank you. I mean, it, it ticks a little bit, but it doesn't. I wouldn't call it stick anymore. It just makes an audible noise as it as it separates. So your viewers, what did they think? They did not like it a bit. Yeah, I was really surprised by that. I thought because I had in yep. the comments, you know, people were saying, "Why don't you view more Emersons?" Especially right now in this climate, where people are wanting to see more American stuff and. Mm -hmm. I was getting an avalanche yeah, comments true. about about Emerson's, and then White Mountain got them in. So I, I got this was a 2019. I don't think they released any new 2020s. This year. Uh, I think they've released anything new this year. No, they recall. they've done like a little sprinty thing up front. That yeah. That, uh, yeah. So this was one of the new ones. It was a 2019 that they released at Shot Show 2019. So I I got it and. I don't hate it. I, I know people are going to think that I hate it, but I don't hate it. It's just not something I'm, I can see myself carrying very much. And like I said, I want to keep providing content and I know my buddy Bob likes them. <laughs> yeah. Move it along to Bob. He'll take it. I don't it. remember if you asked me if I was selling or if. No, 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 no. You, no. you, you, you uh, oh, I, I commented. I, I like that. And uh, you know, if you ever oh, want to get rid of it, it, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. oh, gee, funny you should ask. Oh, the Elvia, that's what it is. Yeah. 
and the mini sheepdogs. Yes. Edwin oh, Callow. the mini sheepdogs do look cool. That is one I would probably, I would probably take another shot on. Um, Actually, I like the mini better than the regular. Just speaking from looks, I haven't held either. I don't know what the Elvia is yet. I'll have to look that up. That's the um, that's the uh, uh, Pical grip. Uh, what's his name? Oh, someone help me! Someone help me! You're just you're just saying letters. Now. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying things. Uh, famous uh, uh, guy who worked on the border. Um, he, he has a, a an awesome blog that he talks about stories. Come on, someone help me! Stories of working on the border, being an agent, and his mother had this paring knife, this weird little curvy paring knife that she always carried on her on her to work and ed calderon thank you uh, and 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 uh she once used this little knife to defend the family from a street thug so the story goes and so um he's always had this knife produced and reproduced in tactical ways um he has um copus designs which is a small uh knife company uh, makes a version of it uh with a with a pl plastic handle um uh one other hot shot custom maker makes a version of it whose name i can't recall but now uh they are making it over there at uh it's a fruit knife turned to self-defense thank you edwin um but now over at emerson they're making the same thing it's got a really weird curve to it when you look at it at, for a folder you know mm -hmm. kind, kind of a little bit like the the new pinkerton inversion you look at it and you're kind of like huh how does that go into the handle and then you realize but uh, looks neat, looks and, wicked. And then you say, huh, again. When it yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why? Oh, because you can, and it's because awesome. Because can. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that should be a, a cool one. I know Edwin will get one for sure. Uh, he's he's our resident uh, uh, expert on Emerson's. He's got a, a vast collection. And some of the really beautiful uh, custom ones that have the nice titanium bolsters with the green micarta, that to me is like the the height yeah. of the Emerson aesthetic. I just can't, I can't go there. I can't spend that much money on Ernie releases new ones. Their models already out there, but called, Oh yes. The XHD. Uh, so uh, our good friend, Alex uh, from Alex's knife box got one of those recently. And I think uh, Edwin also did the XHD Tanto. It's like extra thick. It's got a, it's got a giant titanium backspacer. I mean, it's just like, you know, on, on steroids, but hmm. As, as he mentioned but uh so all right we're talking about knives that you obviously that you li love and then others that you don't love but you're experiencing and and yes you can't you know if if we we're all filthy rich maybe we could hold on to every single nice that knife that passes yeah. through our hands but you have to keep moving them along and so as an editor you you're you're the incoming editor of knives illustrated now how are you going to manage or how does one manage uh covering well for you covering the knife world uh, uh something you're passionate about uh fairly without without letting your own tastes dictate too much th the program or well, is that the idea i think it's impossible not to let your own taste dictate it a little bit but mm -hmm. i have a huge you know group of contributors so um I yield to them on things. And I think a lot of people think that I'm just a YouTuber that's going to run a magazine now, but that's not at all true. I've been a writer for 22 years and own my own cycling website for 20 of those still do. And um, I'm stepping back from that and letting someone else run it now. But um, it's, uh, yeah, I've been, and I've reviewed products for everything. So yeah, of course, some of your personal, like, it's your opinion. That's the dumbest comment I get on YouTube channels all the time is What's on that? YouTube comments or, or, or any internet comments. You say you're, that review is just your opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's what a review is. Um, of course, it's just my opinion, but like, I just had a conversation today, one of the regular contributors and he does a lot of like custom fixed plate stuff. I know nothing about that. It doesn't interest me a bit. But I know it interests our readers. So I said, hey, I'm going to be leaning on you a lot as this goes on because I don't know anything about that. Hmm. And he said, cool. So just let people who know what they're doing, you know, do it themselves. So, and I, I've talked to other guys who may be on the screen about maybe doing some stuff. So it's just, you know, for <laughs> you just, you just reach out to people that you know that you know can, can write and can do it. And you just kind of 
let them go, you know, and tell them how many words and, you know, what to make it about. And then you just, you know, edit the grammar. Now, ideally, yeah. ideally, I'm not changing anything of, sub of substance in anybody's article. Ideally, right. you don't have to do that. You know, ideally, you just get people that know what they're doing and can make it concise and entertaining and, and, and pump it out. And, and yeah, of course, I'm going to publish articles about stuff that I'm, I'm probably going to read it the one time I edit it and that'll it, that'll be it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, um, cause it doesn't interest me and I'm probably not going to read it again, but I know that our Thank readers you. are, and my main goal is to make, I just want the magazine to be something that you don't just look at the cover, flip to the one article you want to read and put it down and never pick it up again. I want it to be one that, you know, you sit on the toilet and you read the whole thing, yeah. you know, yeah. like I want it to be something that's interesting cut front to back. So that's kind of, if anything I want, if any, one of my one, my main, if I have to like a, like a goal is I just want to make it interesting and entertaining. So Rusty, you're, I don't know if you've oh, noticed this, thank you've, you, been, Rusty. you've been that. getting showered with accolades, people congratulating you. Rusty, I haven't seen just all subscribe. of them, I'm sorry, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're not going to see a lot of my influence for a little while, but um, bye, Dave. Yeah, it's, um, see you, Dave. But uh, I'm I'm really excited about the opportunity. So and and they're they're giving me some latitude and some time. So I'm pretty pretty excited about it. So this is a great opportunity for you to create a body of work. You're going to have I mean, because when when you're done with a year and you have twelve, I was about to say episodes, twelve editions of the magazine. That's like a it's book. Five, it'd be, it'll be it's seven. We do by monthly, and there's a special one. Yeah. Well, at, in any case, that's a after a year, you will have a nice compendium of of work in front of you, and 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 the um, the great thing about it is that you have the spirit of a real collaborator. You know, um, it, like a producer. And, and there, there's actually going to be less of my writing in it than there was before. Like the last two issues, I think I have three articles in each one, and. I'm going to limit myself to two at the absolute most, you know, now that I'm the editor. So um, it's, you, you can make your influence felt other ways. And I want to, I want to keep the, you know, the, the guys that we've had for a long time happy and keep them working. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, Jim, Jim has up the uh, knives illustrated page and uh, you know, I see that it's a beautiful, I've been to it online at, and I have seen it at the newsstand, though I haven't been to a newsstand in a while. And uh, this is not just a web thing. This is also print, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, you know, it, obviously the whole print world is is changing. So, uh, and we're moving with that. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's the main topic of conversation since I've gotten there is not necessarily transitioning away from print but doing more digital and you know because that's everybody's got everybody wants to look at their phones and their computers and their ipads and stuff you know people don't yeah. care as much about print anymore so um that's a long-term thing though but i love all the uh the michael janich stuff i've been following him yeah. and knives illustrated for quite a while and um and then that recent uh article about the chris <laughs> which uh, you, you know which one I'm talking about? The Chris Knife. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I I loved it, but I thought it was kind of hilarious. It was like, because the guy was writing like he was writing for me. He's like, uh, yeah, you know, when you're out and about, just, you know, tuck your Chris. I mean, that's not what he said, but, you know, he's showing um, different scenarios uh, that you wouldn't expect to see someone draw a Chris. And I was like, to me, that's cool. You know, so I loved that yeah. because it's 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 a bit of. um variety you know it's not just uh well like you said it's not just collector grade fixed blades and it's not just what everyone is now collecting with the titanium and the and the frame lock and, yeah. and the modern stuff it's uh it's a bit of a a nice little uh a, yeah I, I want it to be a potpourri yeah well it's a nice the diversion worst popular word to, to use for that but you know i just i want it to be a good mix of stuff Okay, Spirited Whiskey asks Bob Slicey, what's your favorite steel for an EDC folder if you had to pick one? Any steel alloy is an option. I, uh, I, I, S35. S35. I would say uh, CPM 154. To, 154 is high up there, too. They're yeah. both the same quality. It's very easy to sharpen, very yes. stainless. Um, hold an edge good enough to keep you happy. Yep. 
and uh yeah i don't like i love super steels but um uh they're not as easy to sharpen and yeah they're not and, hard a lot of them aren't hard but um well they are hard they're not difficult um, right but yeah the only one i don't like and i just got an s90v knife today but i couldn't pass it up i didn't care what steel was on it um i don't like s90v just i hate sharpening it because oh it's God, a pain it. yeah. uh what what was the knife and then and then we're going to talk about the void because i know you, oh, no, you know okay. about it could it, can i can i show it to you please do oh dear god that is gorgeous i love it yeah. <clears throat> look at that uh, anno job to all the people out there who call me a hinderer fan <laughs> i traded a hinderer for this oh <laughs> that's so, a beaut man look at that jeez I, i'm down a hinderer i just replaced it about an hour ago <laughs> i did another trade to get another hinderer back i traded two spider oh. for a nice. but um yeah i got a um some guy offered to trade me a skinny no oil slicer and i was like yes I'll, Ooh, i will do that dlt so exclusive I, yeah i traded a couple of uh, um spider coats for it. and it, what's funny is that the xm18 i traded for this was my dlt exclusive working finish um, oh nice. 18 with the fullard spear and um then uh now i have another dlt back so nice and this is a dlt exclusive as well actually so this particular they do a lot of great and the S90V is the S90V is exclusive to them. But uh, I just talked to Greg tonight. He said, yeah, and, um, I actually was going to send him pictures of this to make sure it was like genuine, you know, before mm -hmm. I sent the guy his knife when I got it. But then uh, the box had the, the stock number on it. And I yeah. googled the stock number, and it came right up. Um, it's this oh, cool. is a one of one. I could tell the flame pattern is even exactly the same. So I'm like, oh, right, sweet, it's, it's real. So, so uh, there was a gentleman. Well, I don't know if he's a gentleman. I always just assume, but uh, someone put up something saying that he was a boomer, and so he likes magazines on paper. So, so kudos. Yeah, to you. and and that, and that is that is a whole lot of our uh, our readership. And honestly, uh, what I think I was most surprised to learn about Nice Illustrated is that um our our newsstand sales are a really high proportion compared to our subscription. So it's a lot of people just picking it up off the newsstand. So um, and we have great photographers there. So it's a beautiful, it's always a beautiful looking magazine. And that's something that like, I would never even remotely consider changing. Like yeah. just the, the look of it is fantastic. It's a gorgeous magazine. So um, keep it. So uh, yeah, keep it that way. And uh, we just got a new art director, but it'll stay the same state from same photographers. But um yeah so what are your thoughts on the sharp by design void xl do you uh, uh caleb who, who won the tonight? Yet. So, okay. so the xl is made here by brian in, and then in the, the void is the riot um i have a void um and uh, i've not had the xl yet though at all but i love the void i can't it's probably just going to be that but a little nicer and a little bigger uh, I, I think it's a really cool design. Uh, I think everything he does is really impressive, but man, nothing to me will ever match the arch nemesis, which is still to me, the most perfect folding knife. Those are very cool. God, just beautiful, man. And, and daggery, which I love pay for paper. So also get it in digital. Right yeah. On. Yep. You can get it both ways. Yeah. All right, so I'm thinking, yeah, the the Void XL is a sharp edge design custom about twelve hundred or so. Yeah, I, I think they're a little over, a little over a grand. Yeah, worth the it. The reason why I don't buy customs is I would get the most boring one. So, like, I can find what I want in the production world. Although my tastes are obviously changing a bit, you know, this is mm -hmm. kind of wild looking. But um, right. my my LUDT is purple and stuff. But um. Still, I think getting a custom, I would get something just kind of boring. I don't like Mokutai. I think it's hideous. I do, too. Don't love Damasteel that much. And then you put you them know? next to each other, and it's busy. Yeah, it's just like, it reminds me of those uh, magic eye things at the mall. Yeah, yeah. What it's do you like, see when you step back and zone out? I, I'm on an Instagram group with a bunch of other uh, YouTubers that um, are fans of custom things. And that's my favorite running joke there is they'll post a picture of their new fancy Mokutai multicolored knife and I'll just go sailboat. Sail like, the, <laughs> like the magic eye things, you're always supposed yeah. to see a sailboat. Yeah. And uh, that's it was it was really funny the first like 50 times I did it. And then 
it wasn't funny anymore for about 50 times, but a stupid joke like that gets funny again. Right, if right. You keep doing it. They can't believe that you're still doing it, and it gets funny again. They're like, this guy's relentless. We better start laughing again. <laughs> yeah, just every time they show something with Moku Tayana, I go, sailboat. To me, I'll be I like that's a lovely sailboat. <laughs> to to me, it always reminds me of uh, Mr. Furley from Three's Company. You know, he'd have these crazy oh, leisure yeah, suits right. with the tie yeah. and then the, all these different patterns. Uh, have you seen Pop's custom clips? Just picked up an eighty ten and recon one deep carry. I have not. I I've seen them, um, but no, I have I not haven't. experienced them. I didn't know they did that. I would like to have a deep carry clip from an eighty ten. That would be cool. And incidentally, Man, I love that knife. By the way, God, that's a good knife. eighty ten. Yeah. I, I would. I've seen a few people um, uh, uh, grind the blade into a um, a clip point, and it looks really sweet. Yeah, I, I, I see that. Yeah. I just don't think I would do it on mine. I, I have one of the hollow ground ones, and and uh, I know you had a hollow ground, got rid of it, and yeah. <laughs> I know it's. Yeah, I know it's it's such a subtle thing, but man, yeah. But it, I did it. I did it for the people, because. Did it for the people. comparison test. I need to have the one that people can actually go buy. So selfless for the people. It's yeah, still it's great like... without the hollow grind, but I know in my head that it's not. It's yeah. Not hollow. <laughs> it, well, it's, 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 it's a schooner. <laughs> well, it depends on how many masts there are. Isn't that what it depends? I don't know. I don't know anything about boats. I think so. I think so. So uh, I need to hop on and show you my acquisitions this week. Please do. Before we get to the knife fight, I want to see what you got. Spirited whiskey. My God. This, I, this, this may be one time. Maybe I can somewhat compete with spirited whiskey because I had the most epic mail calls mail call today. So maybe yes, this one you... time, this one time, maybe I'll have at least one that's as nice as one of his nine that he probably got out this week so uh you posted a picture on instagram today tell us what you got in the mail oh it was glorious because uh, so a couple things arrived early a couple things arrived late and they all just came today so it was like <laughs> literally a month's worth of trades and uh and you know review samples from companies and other things I'd worked out just all came out. It came the same day. So I got the Medford that you saw. Mm. I got the Harkins that you saw. I got the second ever made production Protect Malibu, which is Ooh, amazing. Oh, God, that is, is oh my beautiful. God. This is, this is uh, when you see my knife of the year list, this is going to be on. I can promise you that. It is fantastic. And when Protect, the rare times they do a manual, it just makes you mad at them. <laughs> that they don't do them all the damn time. Yeah. Um, and then I got uh, a Heretic Hydra. Continuing with my auto kick. Wow. It's a big, giant, single action. This is uh, Heretic is uh, uh, Murphy owned from Micro Texas's son runs the company. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty darn cool. Never Learned thought I'd like a from single that. action auto, but this is cool. And I will say... Um, this is as close to no blade play as I've ever had uh, in an auto. Um, there's a tiny little bit. I have not held a uh, Hawk dead, Deadlock. I hear that they mm -hmm. don't have any at all. But, yeah. um, and uh, Before you move on. I got the Launch 11. Yeah. Unlike uh, the, the Microtech out the fronts that you've been... Um that you've been uh loving mm -hmm. recently uh the single action uh it will not stop like i mean uh in other words you you take a, a regular out the front and hit a piece of paper it will it will interrupt the blade you know and it will yeah. um but on one of the like the hydra a single action out the front the spring is continuous right i've never tried it let's try it let's find out together here i'm going to take a roll of tape and see how far it goes into it yeah no don't stop Ooh, be that careful with it, that. that. Pushed it away. Yeah, but it has a, it has a safety cover on huh? it. So, is, uh, yeah. Yeah, you kind of flip this beautiful. thing. God, I got a camera on. You kind of move it to the side to reach the... Oh, that's nice. Yeah, but it's very comfortable. And it's the first knife I've had that I'm leaving the lanyard on because it's <laughs> on the charge handle, so it actually makes sense to have it on there. So you can just pull it the back. lanyard. But... Um, you're right. It doesn't stop. I didn't know. I just kind of guessed that maybe it would, but uh, no, nope, that put a pretty deep hole in that tape. So that has spirited whiskey. Hello, sir. Good curious. to see you. 
First of all, congratulations oh. to you, Brian. It doesn't stop, no. Thank you. Yeah, man. So happy for you. Yeah, it's a it's a great opportunity, and I hope uh, I hope to uh, maybe maybe uh, get some contributions from you at some time. I, I was feeling like uh, when I when I heard this news, I felt like uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, what's his name? Uh, or, well, Robert De Niro and and what's his name in um, in Goodfellas when Joe Pesci gets made, and they're like. They're like, well, now that he's in, you know, that means it's good for all of us. And and that's yeah. how I feel like, uh, uh, you know, with Brian's taste and with his editorial direction, the magazine's going to be even awesome. I mean, it's a beautiful thing to behold already. And they do a lot of very cool articles. But with Brian behind the wheel, like it's, it's going to be a better place for everyone. You're going to add a lot of terrific value for them. So yeah. it's, it's I hope so. It's, it's, that's, I mean, it's, I had a good, I have a really good start. So I mean, a really good platform to start from. So um, it's, uh, yeah, my predecessor, especially Margaret, did a great job. So um, I, she just found a better job that she wanted more. So, um, and good for her. I'm happy for her and she's happy for me. And she gave me a good place to start. So, right on. So, oh, look at that. Look at that. Well, let's see if I can. Uh, so, this is the new. Prometheus Design Works exclusive small and cozy. Oh, that's I'm already out. I thought I could beat him on one thing. <laughs> I thought well, maybe my Medford would be cool mill, on one of his knives. See how they mill that? It's incredible. That is yeah, amazing. I mean, the mill works outstanding on it. So that's cool. That's one. Um, two is uh, I got not one, but two. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. <laughs> old Spectres. This one is a, a V4 in M390 with a bent starburst pattern on the scales. Whoa. And a near mirror stone wash on the blade. And then that's an inset liner lock on the V4s, which is really, really cool. And I mean, of course, these things are just ridiculous action. And then here's the second Spectre. That is, is in um, Dam of Steel. With a feather pattern, frame lock. And it has a dual, a really cool dual anno going on. So that's that's number two, that's number three, I guess. And then the last that really exciting um is is this bad boy oh yes this is the one i've been watching oh, take cool. shape on instagram so yeah yeah if you follow my instagram look at i mean the grind work from josh so it's all dlc it was dlc first and then the flats of the scales were were hand sat and polished mm -hmm. so everything is dlc like all, you know that's all dlc mm -hmm. on the inside etc the clip is DLC. The flats are stone washed, and then he did a double hollow grind on the swedge. Oh wow, jeez! Up top, so there's a beautiful hollow up there, and then he did an unbelievable hollow grind on the primary, and it's just—I mean—the thing's flawless. So, yeah, those those are the acquisitions this week. So, <laughs> yeah, never mind. Mic drop. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, well, one time, maybe I'd have one thing that's as cool as one thing that you got. Um, it was a big, it was a big week for sure. I wasn't expecting to win. I just was hoping to get on the board. No, you're on. You're still on the board, brother. Let me let me ask you a question about the uh, the um, the Wilson Combat. Is yeah. are they? Uh, so that's got a, a lock bar, um, not a lock bar insert, but it's got a uh, uh, an over travel, right? right? It's got an like an uh, like an LBS in there. Yeah, so that's, so they, that's don't, they don't do that on their own knives, right? Just just on this, that. Is that correct? Is, that's right. This is the only one that has it. But uh, this is the only one that has the. Uh, it's like a hinder style style LBS. Yeah, it's cool. So wow. it does act as an over travel stop. I don't know if why it's necessarily there. I couldn't foresee anyone but a Hercules. Somehow, yeah, right. Bending that lock bar to a point where it would really be impactful, and um, but 
looks good. Wasn't, good place isn't, the look. Reasoning, isn't the reasoning being like if it gets caught on something or something like that? If the lock bar gets hung up, yeah, I suppose. And then, you know, maybe, falling off a building and putting your entire body weight on it. Then maybe yeah, it could. I don't know. But, yeah, I think that Starburst with that DLC underneath and that That's polish wicked cool. looks pretty cool. We have a very generous contributor offering to take all those knives off your hands, gentlemen. So uh, I think you should take them up on the offer. Anthony Clark says, try to go live and show my Fairbairn Sykes collection. Holy mackerel. All right, Anthony, let's do that next week. Come on. And because uh, that would be a real, can you put that back up, Jim, please? I just wanted to read the rest of it. That would be a really cool thing to see. I, I, I love daggers. I'm, I'm very interested in uh, the stuff Harzi's been doing. Uh, well, not, yeah. not, I mean, Spartan, you know, they have, they have the Les George uh, dagger, Fairbairn Sykes, and they also have the new Les um, Bill Harzi dagger. I mean, those things are amazing. I, uh, so yeah, next week definitely uh, get a get a bigger light on UTC. I want to see this collection. That sounds pretty amazing. Hey guys, uh, are you guys up for for doing a debate? The two of you, a little sure. knife fight with. Okay, so sure. I was I was thinking a fun one would be, and and I and I I thought this one up with with Brian in mind because I know recently he's been really into Protex, and he's also been really into Microtex, and yeah. so I thought a really good one would be Protex. I'll take either Microtex. side. Okay. All right. Uh, and I will admit to Spirit of Whiskey, I knew this a couple hours ago. That is true. That is uh, true. Well, he, he did know this. And for, had, had for once, time. he included it plan. on the on the show layout. It <laughs> I, was did on not, there, I did so. not plan on on participating in Night Fight. However, I will say this: this will be my third week in a row. Somehow, miraculously, just getting involved into Night Fight. And, and you're under. You're undefeated. Yeah, we won the last two, so you know we got that going. All right. All well, right. Convenient, conveniently, conveniently, you show up at the end, kind of like right when knife fights are. He's a sandbagger. I think he's yeah, like yeah. some sort of. I'm an expert. Yeah. yeah, I've been called worse. All right. So what are you so, take? It's up to you. You're the. This is your show. So I think. Uh, let's see. I think we're going to give uh, Brian Microtech, and and we will give you Ryan Protech. Does that work? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to flip a, a knife <laughs> to decide who. All right, Brian, that's you. Okay. So I, I'm even prepared with props. I've got a couple of Microtechs here. So um, I would say the advantages of Microtech are the bang for the buck. A lot of people think that these are horribly expensive knives. They are not. They're not that bad. They're not inexpensive, but they're not expensive. This is, what, 270 for UTX-85? And you're getting 204P or M4, M390, whichever steel it is they're using that year. And it's it's a really good value. I have the LUDT. You're looking at, like, 240 mm -hmm. for this one's M390. They are very, very good value. The you know, the, the so commonly all their famous models are actually pretty, they're not inexpensive. They're, they're really good price. They're just kind of hard to find. They do them in short runs. So you can always find if you want to go get a UTX or you want to go get an LUDT, you can get one. It may not be exactly the configuration that you want, but if you want to find that. And the quality on them is just outstanding. It's Microtech. They have a great warranty. They're just a really good value they're built like tanks uh their the actions on the autos especially the otfs are pretty much second to none the ludt is one of the best slicers out there and you know people don't think of it that way mm -hmm. and if you want a beast they got the socom elite they just have a really well well-rounded line and they're a lot better value than you think they are all right all right well done well done spirited whiskey you know, I can't disagree with a lot of the points that you bring up. Um, I own a number of Microtex and Marfione uh, customs, and and they're awesome. However, um, I think Protec has a number of one-ups actually on Microtech, um, and I think a couple of them. Microtech has a, a pretty good quality assurance program that they do. They're pretty good about turnaround and customer service. But Protec is among the very best in terms of uh, in, in terms of customer service that I've ever seen. Um, their machine work is incredible. I'm not saying Microtech isn't, but what I think really separates Protech from Microtech is the fact that Microtech only utilizes really in-house design work that's done by either oh Anthony sorry either okay wait a minute sorry the dog in the middle of the night fight um, so. 
you know, they only use in-house designs, whether it's the son or the dad, um, and you know, or their internal folks, right? Whereas ProTech has relationships across the knife industry, um, whether it's Les George, whether it's Mick Strider or whomever, and they're gathering a lot more intellectual property and intel and creating a lot more uh, unique and, and, and um, incredible design language that's normally only done in the custom arena or in small production arena and making them available to a broader audience. Um, so, you know, I think Microtech is, is great. I think Microtech and Protech qualitatively are actually pretty much the same, but I think that Protech kind of one-ups Microtech and the fact that they have a much greater breadth of production capabilities, um, design, not just designs, but also in um, expansive material usage um, and etching and, you know, and hand uh, engraving pieces and uh, just a, a much wider variety of stuff that are at the same quality level. Wow. All right, guys. But that's can't something. Get <laughs> well, that's not true. They that's make, all I got. They make the Dark Angel. It's a single oh, action yeah. OTF. I think it's called the Dark Angel. Uh, ProTech has been nothing short of impressive as of yeah. late. Uh, they have. They always... agree. I'm gonna. I'm gonna yield. I'm gonna yield because yeah, both, I, I, like, awesome. I like ProTech for all those same exact reasons. Yeah. Like, I own awesome, though. Like I, I own seven Protex and I own seven Protex and three Microtex. So, but I also just by my ownership score. Like I still don't get. Like I even love my Marfion custom SOCOM Elite that I have, right? But what I don't understand is why. Like I understand why some of the Protex get to be so expensive. I don't necessarily understand why just throwing a hand grind on something increases the cost by four times. That part I see. I, I never even look at. I never even look at them. Anyway, but, I, I, but I'm just I own multiples of both, and they're awesome. So, uh, yeah. yeah, good night, Mike. That's, that's actually uh, kind of an interesting thing that you say. Like, uh, that perked up my ears when you said, I don't know about why throwing a hand grind should should multiply it by four. Kind of seems to make sense. You know, you would have the signature of the maker there in that grind. But, yeah, maybe maybe four times is, is excessive. I, I think you guys did an awesome uh, 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 knife fight. I, I tried to make it as difficult as possible because to me, sure. uh, you know, they're both awesome. Yes. I, I love them both. And I, I love the character of both companies. I don't know much about, uh, about uh, Anthony Marfioni, but I, but I, I think Dave Wattenberg is a, a great guy. And I think he's got an interesting story. And um, I think the knives are great. And uh, I've only recently got into Microtech in the last uh, uh, about year. Actually, this is, I was showing this to, to Brian before. This is a, an, a 2000 Microtech. It's a, a Lightfoot LCC. And it's a, it's a double action. So you, you move the bolster. You and used it. to do more of that, right? Like Microtech used to yep. do yeah. more collaborative work. Like they had one from Terzuola, right? Yep. At one point. Yep. Um, we just brought one up. But it, they really have moved away from that. I think in, in more recent years and have really just stuck with what Sean and Tony are, are really doing and whatever their design team is doing and keeping them all in house. Yeah. Um, ever since really, I think the induction of the LUDT was probably one of their, you know, one of the ones that started it all for them ever since that really took off. And it's still one of the best. I, I own an LUDT and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. I just, I just got mine and I, hardly can keep it out of my pocket it's fantastic that purple one and not, yeah. not only because it's purple but partly <laughs> because it's purple all right guys i think it's about time to call it my my we, we yeah. there's one important question we haven't answered yes how'd you cut your finger ah uh, <laughs> uh, uh funny you should ask that it was this huh? it was this uh i i went to close it and i i didn't have it all the way down i went Rick! yep Yep. No. Dumb no other. <laughs> Thank you, Rusty. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Dumbass. They're not weird until they bite you. Yeah, man. Exactly. No. Exactly. And and uh, I, man, I just I'm covered with them. I, I've I've done a lot of. Oh, I do. I've got so many little scars on my fingers. Somebody said that uh, in one of my comments today, you don't truly own a knife until it makes you bleed. I'm like, well, then I own a lot of knives. Yeah. Yeah. More, <laughs> like, more than are in my possession. I truly own a lot of knives then. 
Well, uh, Brian, Slicey Dicey, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Spirited Whiskey, Thanks for having me. pleasure to have you. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to uh, I want to congratulate you, Brian, for your uh, for this accomplishment. I, we're we're all Thanks, really Dan. excited that you that you're going to be the editor of Knives Magazine, or that you've begun. Thank Knives you, Anthony. Illustrated. Congratulations. What did I say? What did Knives, I say? You said Knives Magazine. I'm sorry. I was just being lazy and reading something else. Knives Illustrated, my favorite thing to actually pick up and look at uh, on the newsstands. Beautiful. Uh, we're all excited. Uh, all excited to see where you take it. So thank you. Uh, for I'll spirit try not to disappoint you. <laughs> Excuse me. You couldn't if you tried, sir. We're all looking nah, forward to it. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, for Brian. And Ryan, I want to say thank you all, and please do not take dull for an answer.